statement, a new poll suggested a majority of British voters believe Brexit was the wrong decision. Well, the survey found 45% of people now believe it was the wrong decision to vote to withdraw from the EU, compared to 43% who think the decision to leave was right. 12% said they didn't know. Well, joining me now to discuss this poll is Joe Twyman from YouGov, the team behind it, and Conservative MP and leading Brexiteer Jacob Rees-Mogg. Welcome to you both. Um, if I come to you first, Joe, 45% saying that it's the wrong decision. That's a record amount, a 2% shift, isn't it? Yes, it is. But it's something that we've been tracking for some time since the, uh, since the Brexit referendum itself. And what we've found is that there's a bit of movement, but really not very much. Essentially, because of the margin of error associated with all polls, uh, it's a dead heat. And that's what we've seen consistently. Sometimes right decision is ahead, sometimes wrong decision is ahead. Uh, what it shows is that the divisions that we first saw back at the time of the EU referendum have not gone away. And yes, when you look at other data, you can see that around two thirds of people believe that Britain should exit the EU. And so in that sense, there is a rallying around Brexit. That's a combination of people who believe that it's the right decision, but also people who believe that we should be staying, but the result of the referendum should be respected. Do you get any insight as to why people are voting this way in the polls? Uh, well, it's for the same reasons that they voted for Brexit. There hasn't been that amount, a significant amount of movement. Yes, a few people have moved uh, to the opposite side and vice versa, but they tend to cancel each other out. And there's been anecdotal evidence of, well, I have a friend who's changed his mind, but actually there's been very little movement. And that's perhaps not surprising, given that actually very little has happened with regards to the Brexit negotiations. And we've got many years left of that potentially. And it's only once the implications are felt, I think, that we'll then start seeing significant movement. Um, not a great deal of movement, but movement nonetheless uh, towards those that perhaps regret voting uh, for the UK to leave the EU. Are you worried at all by that, Jacob rees -Mogg? No, because I've listened carefully to what Mr Twyman has said, and what he said is extremely sensible and right, uh, that the movement is within the margin of error. The figure has been very stable, that people haven't much changed their mind since the 23rd of June. I have a suspicion that the um, support for leave is understated because the polls did understate it prior uh, to the election, but that's only a suspicion. But that the key poll is that two thirds plus of people are saying either that we were in favor of it and now want it to happen, or that as it's happened, let's get on with it and do it properly. And I believe there is a YouGov poll that has showed that people think the government ought to get on with it faster and just push ahead because the decision has been made and they want it implemented. Can you corroborate that? <laughs> yes, I mean, ultimately, what people think more than anything is that, the, is that democracy should be respected. That's the important thing. The people have spoken. And yes, while some people, a proportion of people, disagree with the result, it doesn't mean they disagree with the fact that the decision should now be made. And so there is a respect for the result of the referendum. And that's what's driving this, as I say, around two thirds of people believing that, yes, now the decision has been made, rightly or wrongly, now the decision has been made, we should go through it with it because it is the of the people. And what about the element of undecided? How do they factor into the story? Uh, well, there's still uh, still a proportion of people who are who are undecided on uh, on this, but it's a relatively small number. So it's fewer than one in ten. Uh, but uh, but again, there's a lot still to a uh, lot still to come on this, and there's no doubt that, uh, that this will play an important role in the general election campaign because, as I say, the divisions are still there, and so that means that around a third of the people who voted Conservative at the last election voted to remain part of the EU. Around two Two thirds of the people who uh, voted Labour also voted Remain, but that leaves one third who voted to leave. How strategically you deal with that during an election campaign will be an interesting challenge for all the parties. I think the key on that is the two thirds of people who now accept the result and want it implemented, and therefore will want the result implemented effectively. And that's pointing very strongly to Mrs May, because when you think, should we have Mrs May negotiating with Mrs Merkel or Jeremy Corbyn, Everybody pretty much says they want Mrs May and therefore that part of the research I think is crucially important and very beneficial for the Conservative campaign. Uh, you mentioned Angela Merkel. Uh, what did you make of her comments today that uh, there are Brexit uh, illusions, that perhaps there are elements within uh, the UK that think that we can have exactly the same conditions as we did when we were a member of the EU and that simply isn't going to happen? Well, it's not quite what she said. She said she, well, wanted, the, <laughs> but she, said she wanted the divorce settlement done before the trade negotiation. The great thing is 
we have, as our Prime Minister, a lady with considerable backbone who I would support going into the negotiations with Mrs Merkel. Mrs Merkel is a hard-boiled egg and she's going to be tough to negotiate with. And the key is we've got somebody who can stand up to her. So what she said today is perfectly reasonable in Germany's that interest. there are Brexit illusions? No, in Germany's interest. Mrs. Her Merkel, direct quote was Brexit illusions, wasn't it? It was. Mrs Merkel is defending German interests, which you would expect her to do. She's the German Chancellor. We need, and we will have in Mrs May, somebody who can project British interests. And in the opening of the negotiation, of course the Germans want us to promise a lot of money and say, well, then we might look at trade. That won't be in our, in our interest. We will want to say, we want to know what we're getting out of this, thank you very much, before we agree to give you anything in return. So what, what do you... But that's where having Mrs May is going to be so good, because she's tough enough to do What do you interpret by the German Chancellor saying that there are Brexit illusions? What oh, do you interpret by uh, that? At the beginning of a negotiation, people set out their position as strongly as they can. And what she's doing is trying to make us feel less sure in our own position. There aren't Brexit illusions. We know that they need our money. And that's a key strength for us in these negotiations. And they want us to buy their goods. We shouldn't be bullied by Mrs Merkel. And it's Mrs May we need to stand up for us. And Mrs May has made much of uh, the, the strong and stable government leading us into Brexit. Is that really the only campaigning issue for the Conservative Party? What about the other issues that Jeremy Corbyn's talking about, about education and things like that? And a few extra days holiday and all being um, lovey-dovey. I mean, I but is it, all, Cor is it all about Jeremy Brexit? Corbyn's, Jeremy is it Corbyn's all about campaign Brexit? hasn't yet been serious, to be fair to him. Perhaps it will become serious, but we'll wait and see. Of course the other issues are important, but there you see a government that is routinely competent in administering the country. Just look at the recent figures on the deficit. The deficit's now down to a third of what it was, down to £52 billion within the normal margins of deficits as a percentage of GDP. That's the essence of competent government, running the economy well, allowing us to afford the services that people want. That is being done by the Conservatives, but on top of that there's this hugely important negotiation which needs to be done by somebody who is competent. And it's very hard to look at the two of them and think that Jeremy Corbyn is competent. And Mrs May exudes competence and confidence. In your opinion. Um, we're running out of time, but I just wanted to quickly ask you, I know Westminster's a great rumour mill, uh, and the rumour is that you might be interested, should you be returned, in becoming the next speaker. Would you care to comment? <laughs> well, uh, um, I fully support John Burko and want him to continue. The problem is, if I came a uh, speaker, I couldn't come on programmes like this and discuss the political controversy of the day, so no, I wouldn't be putting oh, my name you'd forward. Miss us. You'd miss <laughs> us so much. Uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg and Joe Twynham, thank you both.